everyone, welcome back to the Hustlers Guide. Today we have uh, with us Edwin Mgweni. <laughs> Mgweni. Mgweni. Yes. yes, thank you very much uh, for working us into your home. No, you're welcome. I really appreciate you coming through for this interview. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. Okay. I don't take it uh, literally. It's something that I appreciate deep down my heart. So, so that's your book, right? Hustle like a West Africa. Yes. Tell us a bit about that first. So the, the, the book Hustle like a West African, basically it's, um, I call it um, the excuse pressure. Like it trashes all your excuses about why you are not finding a job, why you are not starting a business, uh, why, uh, whatever excuse you have, this book trashes it. It's, it's a book that I believe tells you you can still find a way. That's why it says the art of doing whatever it takes to succeed. Otherwise, there are so many people that give excuses. I haven't found a job because of this. I haven't uh, gone to school because of this. I uh, am a very good example. I completed high school with very good, very, very good results. But I didn't go to the University of Zambia because my parents could not uh, purchase the forms. Those application forms for loans, that are the ones that they get, um, what do they call them? Like, uh, bursary forms for. 150 quarter, my parents couldn't afford. But that didn't stop me from pursuing the life that I wanted. I still had to look at other, other opportunities. I realized that Zika could allow you to study, uh, on self-study, just to pay registration, access their materials, and there you go. And then I started, I became a, an accountant. Then I became a banker. Then here I am, an entrepreneur. So I believe that a lot of people have excuses for life. They give excuses for e everything. They give excuses why they didn't do this, why they don't get promoted. They blame others, they blame the system, they blame everything except themselves. So this book, is basically saying if the West Africans they have problems as we have, how do they manage to excel? That is what I'm trying to teach you. I don't want you to give excuses, I want you to find answers. Sounds like a very interesting book. It is. So, where can someone find the this? So, this book is available um, at Book World as well as Grey Matter. Uh, all bookstores, um, Grey Matter has only got Lusaka and uh, Kitwe. Uh, books bookstore has got more branches in Dola, Mazabuka, Lusaka. And Lusaka also so many, so many uh, bookstores that you can get the books from. Okay. Yes. Okay, so now what about now personally? I think one of the biggest things when it comes to entrepreneurship maybe is motivation. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just maybe stick to just accountancy? Why branch out? Become an entrepreneur? Why do you want to be into? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you my journey. My journey in life was, I came from a very poor family where we lacked everything. We, when I say lacked everything, we were so poor that to survive we used to fetch firewood. Firewood to sell, not firewood to use. We used to fetch firewood, sell, to have a meal. And I did like that. I, I told my parents, this is not the kind of life I would want to live myself. I don't want this kind of life. And they told me, go to school then, so that you can, you can become some better person, a lawyer, accountant, doctor. I wanted to be a doctor. I think I was wrong. I didn't want to be a doctor. I just I think those ambitions that we get when we're kids. I, when I realized that um, I couldn't become a doctor like I wanted when I was a youth, I I realized, you know what, I think this thing is not working of me just being in Ichipata with these ambitions of going to school. I decided to come to Lusaka. So when I came here in Lusaka, actually, that the money that I got to, 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 to use for transport to come to Lusaka, I didn't get it from any relative, I got it from a friend's uncle. Like I literally had to go there and beg from Mr. Fundulu and say, Mr. Fundulu, I really need money. He said, what do you want the money for? I said, I want money to, to pay for Max Motorways so that Max Motorways can take me to, uh, to Lusaka. 
I said, what are you going to do for Saka? I said, I'm going to look for opportunities for myself. I'm tired of being in Chipata, doing nothing. This town is not working for me. And he gave me a hundred kwacha. At that time, Max Motherwells used to be 75 kwacha. I paid and I made with 25 kwacha. And it was basically land in Osaka. Make sure you get to where you're going. Otherwise, you'll be stuck because there's no extra money. And I didn't have shoes. Apparently, he was also size 7. He also had to give me shoes. Apparently, we were the same height. He had to give me trousers, a pair of trousers, like three. And he had to give me shirts. You can imagine what he did. So he had to give me shirts, he had to give me trousers, pairs of trousers. He also had to give me a shoe. Uh, four corner, to get my four corner, you know those four corner shoes in the past. So he gave me that. And I came here in Osaka. There was a friend of mine who used to say in Kanyama and they were selling Salaula at City Market. That's where I went. I went to stay with my friend. Uh, and when I saw what he was doing, I was, my friend didn't even get, get up to grade, grade seven. He was a grade four, five dropout. You can imagine. I joined him. And when he told me he's selling Salaula, I said, you have something to do. I don't. I will join you. He said, no, you, you are educated. You shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I said, no, I'm educated, but I have nothing to do. Let me be following you where you're going. And then I joined him. I realized he was selling second hat clothes at a different level. He wasn't selling the bulky ones. He was ordering from the people that sell bulk ones and sell them to the people that love fashion. So those guys were called vocals. They used to pick the nice clothes from the bells and resell them. Uh, and I didn't have capital. Guess what we, we were doing? We, you sell, there's what they call ons in the streets, where you sell for somebody at a different price to the price they are selling. So you ask the owner, how much are you willing to, to sell this? And they will tell you, you need to sell this at um, 60 kwacha. That's my price. So I'll get that that um, uh, that product. It could be a cloth. It could be whatever it is, and sell it for maybe seventy-five kwacha. Then that fifteen kwacha on top is mine. And when I go back to the owner, the owner also reward me maybe with a five kwacha and say, "Well, job well done. Here's a five kwacha for selling my good. So how much do I have? I have a twenty. So I realize this is an opportunity for me. So I became so interested in selling other people's products. Every time I sell at a higher price, I'm keeping maybe a 20 kwacha. Sometimes it could even be more. Sometimes you keep 50 kwacha. And when you keep that, then the owner maybe gives you 10 kwacha, then you have a 60 kwacha. Then I realized one day, I started having a little bit of some money. You know, I was kept, so I was eating food from my, my friend, who's now my brother. There was nothing I was spending on. So I, the first thing that the guy does is get my, myself a, a moccasin, I got myself a pair of jeans, got myself uh, my t-shirts, fancy t-shirts. Uh, back then we had boot cuts, you know, boot cut jeans. I got myself a few boot cut jeans, I got myself some moccasins, some nice uh, damaged t-shirts and stuff. And I was looking cool, but then I realized I didn't have a business. So one day my grandfather visited me and he, he, he told me, Edwin, he, he came here to do sack my grandfather. He came to get his uh, NAPSA pension. And he asked me, what are you doing? He said, ah, you know, I'm just tamangaling. I'm just, you know, doing one or two things. And he said, what do your friends do? He said, my friends, they sell salaun. How much do you think they, they have invested in their business? I said, maybe 300, 400, I don't know. And that's how, you know how grandfathers are. He just held my hand and put the 450 in my hand. Like he sacrificed. Left me with 450 kwacha. In my hand, like, find a way on how you can survive with this. From that 450, it was a sprint. I started ordering things, I started getting things. I became a real vocal. I had a standard clothes. I started selling. I had money. Now I can even go to Hungry Lion. I could go to places and, you know, I was just having money. I shifted from my friend's place 
had my own uh, small one room house you know one room bed kitchen everything is in one room you know what i mean so um that's how i be- began my journey but that that is not where i stopped so i started as an entrepreneur because i couldn't go to school so for me everything is accidental i take advantage of situation so the situation is it does not go well for me right now i ask myself okay this has not worked what next so at that time i couldn't go to school i couldn't go to the university i said what next i was on the street then i asked again i'm on the street what next oh then you need to start taking yourself to school i realized zika allowed you to study uh on self like self study you can just collect their materials and and then write exams that's how i uh registered for zika as a zika technician and in few years i had a diploma so one day i saw an advert by standard chartered bank that they were looking for bank clerks i applied and i joined as a direct sales representative and at that time a direct sales representative it wasn't it wasn't a good job it was it was these soldiers that would go in the field selling you just meet anyone hey i'm opening a account for standard chartered bank it was hectic and tiring and the pay was little i survived like uh when i joined i realized that you know what i have reached an environment it's a corporate world i also need to excel here when i was selling a salaula which is second hand clothing i excel no doubt about it but i don't get comfortable whenever i reach a certain stage i ask myself what next so i I I went into the corporate order of banking and then became the banker. Then after working for so many years, I was customer service manager. I asked the right questions. People told me what it takes to become successful in the banking world. I was told hard work was one of them, to being creative, three being open minded and also learning company system and processes. So I uh, got acquainted with what the bank it was I, i became a professional i also loved customer service i i i started selling customers exceptional and customers used to speak well of me and in started from the lowest of ranks but i ended up as customer service manager by the time i was leaving which was a management level and a lot of people uh, no matter what they can tell you it's not easy to in the bank to end up where i ended up and the, starting from where i started from you know what i mean but my message here is i worked and banking was good but i realized that i had other goals so i asked myself again i work for standard chartered bank what next is it all just being an employee how much do they pay me is this enough do i want this to be like like the ultimate like what i wanted no i want to become rich rich is not possible with me being an employee for standard chartered bank that's what i just told myself i'm not going to end up rich by being an employee for i knew uh how much the salary increment was no matter how hard working i was i was very hard working my my ratings were always exceptional rating but the salary increment was not matching to my exceptional rating and i knew there is a problem here being an employee i think it won't work so i started side businesses small businesses here and there for me i'm very humble with businesses i'm not like these guys who when they want to start businesses they want to act like they're big shot they want to act like hh but there's the business is more no i have baba shop there are people who think they can't open a baba shop me i have a baba shop i have and i don't even feel like you know it's like why should i have i talk about it i'm so proud to have a baba shop if my wife has a shop at kamala market i'm so proud of, about it why because for me it's about the business business is about starting something where you're selling products or services and pass customers are buying and uh, your products and you're able to make an income out of it it doesn't matter where it's not about being fancy it's about having an actual business that makes money 
So I got tired of being an employee. That's the reason. So um, the journey of entrepreneurship began because I love money too much. So I realized the money was not there where I was working. The salaries were not inspiring. They didn't inspire me to continue. I, I actually told my manager when I was leaving that I think <laughs> these salaries, no. I would rather go get less there in the next five years, but after those five years, I'm making millions. Yeah. yeah. So what advice do you think you'd give a new entrepreneur today? You see, um, becoming an entrepreneur is not easy. Uh, even as I was leaving my job, I understood that I was actually jumping from the pan to the friends of the fire. Entrepreneurship is not easy. It's tough. In Zambia, it's very, very tough. And I always say that you need to be able to take certain risks in life to live the life you want. Think about it. When I was living Chipat to come to Lusat, you think nobody told me of how hard life is in Lusat. My mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, the neighbors, everybody told me how hard it's going to be for me to come here and stay in Lusat. They told me. I knew that it's going to be hard. When I came here, it wasn't easy, but I found my way. When I was here, let me tell you something. I told people that Standard Chartered Bank is sending me to Chililabongo. And everybody here was like, no, why should you go to Chililabongo? It's only a one-year contract. One-year contract. You're going to Chililabongo with your family. Just look for other things. I still took that board move and went to Chitabong. Okay? Same with leaving the bank. It's bold decisions. You need to have guts in that. You, it's risky. And I'm not saying I have it all figured out. Because a lot of people want to figure out everything before they can make the move. When are you going to figure it out? Your life will never be figured out. I don't have it figured out. And I don't think there's anybody who has figured it out. We are all just hustling. So I decided, you know what? How many people are out there looking for jobs? Many of them. I think maybe let me create room for them so that they can find the job that they want. Let me join them and do, do business so maybe I can help government employ some people. And I, and I know it's going to be tough, but I'm going to help government create employment. That's me. Why? I always take risks. You can't be an entrepreneur if you're not willing to take risks. You need to be able to say, you know what? As tough as it is. That's why I'm, I'm talking about hustle like a West African. These guys understand that sometimes opportunities are not where they are. They're somewhere else. They move. They leave their countries. They leave their regions. They come to Zambia. They go to Angola. They go to South Africa. They go to Europe looking for opportunities that's why they are the most authors are from, uh, are from are from west africa the richest musicians are from west africa talk of the richest man in the in africa is from is a west african talk about acting music sports it's west africans that have won the africa cup of nations more than more than any other part of africa it is them also that have featured in the world cup again than any other part of Africa. Why? These guys are determined. They don't figure it out. They don't wait and say, until I get on a plane, that's when I'm going to go to America. No, they say, whatever it takes, I'm going to get on a boat and I'll still reach America. I'll go through Brazil and I'll reach America. I'll even go and work as a maid, as, a, as whatever. I will do it. Some of them are graduates, by the way. In, in case you are thinking, the guys that do that are just these uneducated fellows. Some of them are actually graduates. And you know Nigerians and uh, Ghanaians are very educated. 
very very educated but they are hustlers as well they are not docile like oh no i am a graduate i can't do those jobs you know these kind of graduates we have in this country no west africans they put when it matters most when they realize that if i am going to be fancy about life i'm going to suffer they do whatever it takes to succeed so i have a message to anybody who wants who's looking for a job right now i'm telling you and i'm very serious jobs are going to become very difficult to find it's it's hard to get a job now but we're not yet there yet it's going to become even harder to get a job so the question you should ask yourself what next you should find yourself a job and the only job i know which you can create for yourself is business and the good part with it is that when you have it figured out it's very rewarding so don't be afraid to, to jump into business it's a good thing thank you very much i also appreciate it. Um, as you heard everyone, so please, if you can, go to Google to get yourself a copy of the book and learn how to hustle like a West African. So you too can actually make something of the life.